Welcome to the third video about volume EM rendering in Blender with Tip to Blender. So in this video, I'm going to try to make a video of our data set and see how we can make a nice presentation ready render that shows off a lot of the parts of this data. So just to start, we already had in the previous video, we have a slice and cube for the masks and a slice and cube for our, um, our block. So I'm going to first just set the slice and cube for the block app to cover the whole block and also unrotate it. and set the uh, cube masks. We can actually just set at the same. I'm also going to set this to zero, 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 zero. And also set this to cover the entire volume here. Then I'm going to take the Z projection, just the, the, the top view in Z, and put our camera here and make this a bit more square. And with our camera, we'll go to an actual orthographic projection. So this is a normal, this is not a perspective projection, but how we're used to looking at a Z render. So I'll move this a little bit like this. So what I want to do is I want to see just as if we would go through, through the Z slices, but then actually do volume renders per slice and then have the block, the, the slice, the segmentations trail slightly behind our block. So if we go to a render in X, we can see, for example, in the slightly faster render mode, We don't see that much right now. Um, so I think we can turn off the volume. And the issue right now is that we see the cube because the cube has a setting where it is not being, the alpha channel wasn't being applied. So, Let's do this with the other mask channel with the tricuses because they are very pretty. And at the start, we want the block to fully be covered by the slicing cube. So we can set, if we go slightly easier in the layout, I will actually turn on the figure just to see where we are where the cell is. So I'll move this slicing cube for the volume to cover the takeout exactly at time point zero. And then I will set with I, if I hover over this and set I, I set a keyframe at this point. And then at frame 100, I can move this cube all the way down and hit I, and then in between, it will interpolate this position. And so now we can do the same thing for our cube for the masks, but we want this to be slightly behind the um, the, so we want this to start again at exactly the top, but we want to be this, this to be slightly delayed. So I'm actually going to st only start moving this at, t uh, at 10 frames in, and then go to 100, move it 
down and set it then. And go to our camera view. I will remove the ticker again. But add the volume back in. Ah, and we see that it's a bit too much still, especially if we also look from the side. This is very so for an R cube of the mask, I'm just going to select one of these time points and move it. A bit back. So at 100, we're going to take our cube of the masks and bring it back up. So we can set it all the way back to show everything. And at the same time, we can take our camera, we can keyframe our rotation and location. And then at 130, A side view. Then we can also take the alpha of the um, channel of with our trichocysts and set a keyframe. Which then later set set a keyframe at zero. So then we fade out our trichosis and we can then fade in our other channels. And so then we need to actually include the other channels, even though they're currently not being rendered because the alpha is zero. But then at least they, they know that they need to be included in all the calculations because they might be rendered. And so at a few frames later, we can set channel as visible Let's just look at the number and then we could also think about rotating our entire object by setting a rotation a keyframe Set this to 359. And then we can render this. Okay, now that it's rendered, we can see that it beautifully goes through the stack. However, there are also a few issues in it. For example, these uh, black regions that are showing up, um, and the fact that the camera movement 
uh, is a bit wonky and loses track of the object and that the object rotates out of frame. So we've done one test render, we see a bunch of issues. Also, for example, here that it's way too bright and overlit. Um, let's now see um, how we can make some edits to make a prettier render. So one thing is that it was way too bright at the end. This is actually part of the issue of using this very bright background color. Um, that the color tr that the um, colors don't get skilled correctly. So there is actually a way to easily fix this, which is under the camera settings, color management. We can set this to AGX in high contrast. So then we still keep our contracts, but they, but every, but all the colors get kind of crushed to be in a normal dynamic range. The standard really translates every exact color the way that it is represented in the space to the output image. So if something clips, it will also eclipse the brightness. It will also clip it in the eventual frame. And we can look at how do we want to animate the camera. So the camera movement was a bit bad, both because the movement was not very smooth in itself and because these orthographic cameras, because we want an orthographic camera for zooming through the volume, um, kind of look worse than um, rotating perspective cameras uh, to animate, but we can still animate it. We are, I'm just going to use a slightly different technique, um, which is for the camera, I'm going to add an object constraint to say track to the mesh object. So now, I'm going to quickly just remove the keyframes we had. The camera should now always point towards the object. Okay, we can also see this actually easier. If we go here, if we can move it in X, it will always stay pointing towards the object. The only issue is it's pointing to the left bottom of the object. So we can also add an empty axis object where this we can then set in the middle of our thing. And we actually track the camera to the middle of, of what we're interested in. So we go to the constraint. and we track it to this empty. And if we still wanted to start with a full Z projection, we can just take the X, Y position of our empty which will make us exactly above it. We can set a keyframe for this and then at 120, set the camera to be at the same X, Y. at the same distance in X as we had in Z in the first frame, which was 25 meters. So then it should interpolate as a quite a smooth circle. And we can do a similar thing where 20 frames later, we Y to 25, X to 4, uh, X to 0, Z 
So if you want a more clean single rotation, you can also use in the constraints, you can add a um, follow path if you make a circle and then it really follows that circle path. For now, I think this is a bit easier, um, but I'm now going to remove that the fact that we had our rotation in our actual object. Delete keyframe, so we can delete the keyframes, and then we have only the rotation in the camera. Then there was also the fact that we had black artifacts during rendering, which was around the 95 mark. So this can happen sometimes um, with cycles um, because there are if there are too many surfaces that are transparent that it only that it needs to interact with, where at some point it will give up trying to figure out how many surfaces it has to go through and it actually will turn this black. Um, there are a few there is a if you have this, it, there's a, there's an easy fix for this, um, which is in our render settings, we can change the number of transparent bounces. We can set this to, for example, 80. So we see that there's, even though we're, I mean, we're not done rendering yet, but we don't see these black artifacts coming up that are uh, an artifact of not having enough transparent bounces. So we'll just keep these settings as they currently are. So let's quickly talk about how I'm doing the volume rendering in this scene. So currently I've taken the, I'm taking these inverted color maps, which means that actually all the dense regions are electron sparse and all the sparse, the, the sparse regions and dark regions are electron dense. And I think this can give very nice images and you can really look into the cell sometimes and it's really nice, but also this gives, um, this is slightly unintuitive. So I also want to try, if we're doing another render round anyway, to just take the, in, the actual non-inverted um, data. And I will now render it again and see how it looks and maybe tweak one last thing and then also uh, and then this is the final render uh, thanks a lot for watching thanks a lot for following along um, I hope you can also make beautiful renders and please look around online for other tutorials both for you for using just generic blender techniques if you have any questions specifically about tiff to blender rendering volumes you can always reach uh, me through uh, my GitHub issues, um, and I hope you have a very good time.